Hi, my name is Ron Doe. I'm an associate professor in the Charles Brockman Institute for Personalized Medicine at Mount Sinai. I lead a computational genomics lab focused primarily on dissecting the genetic etiology of rare and common diseases. My name is Ian Forst. I'm an MD-PhD candidate in the lab of Dr. Ron Doe here at the Institute for Personalized Medicine. And I'm interested in applying precision medicine approaches to improve care for diseases using large amounts of genetic and clinical data. Great, so what is the paper about? This paper is really about assessing the disease risk of pathogenic clinical variants. And this is important because for the great majority of clinical variants, disease risk or penetrance is actually unknown. And for the small fraction of clinical variants where it is known, they're not necessarily accurate. And that's because uh, studies in the past have calculated penetrance primarily based in family-based or disease-focused studies. And this can cause an upward bias in penetrance estimates. However, in recent years, the emergence of electronic health record-linked biobanks permits us now to be able to calculate penetrance in a large number of clinical variants. This allows us to calculate penetrance in a population-based manner, which provides more uh, unbiased estimates of penetrance. So with this innovative approach, <clears throat> we were able to uncover three really striking findings about penetrance. Uh, so first, when we look at pathogenic variants in particular, what we find is that there's actually a variable amount of penetrance for these different variants. But as a whole, we find that the actual risk is quite low, around 7%. Now this is higher than what we found for so-called benign variants, where the penetrance was on average less than 1%, but it's still much lower than you might expect with this classification of pathogenic. So that was the first main finding. Uh, the second one, which was also uh, quite surprising for us was that we actually used a large amount of data and therefore looked at the penetrance of individual variants rather than just genes. So what this means is when we have a very fine resolution, specifically at the variant level, we can actually discriminate different types of penetrance and different amounts of risk for each variant in a given gene. So for example, we looked at BRCA1 and BRCA2 two very well-known breast cancer risk genes. And what we find is that, although as a whole on the gene level, the risk was about 38% penetrance, when we look at individual variants within any one of these two genes, we find that there's actually a wide range of penetrance from zero to 100%. So this is really important to be able to look at a fine resolution of variants, not just genes. And our third and last finding uh, was that we actually used two very incredible resources, two biobanks, the UK Biobank and the Biome Biobank here at Mount Sinai. And what these guys have is large amounts of diverse populations. So with that, we were able to actually look at penetrance of variants that are found in not just European ancestry individuals, but individuals of other diverse ancestries too. And we found just over a hundred variants in specific to non-European ancestries. As an example, we found uh, a variant in HBB, a gene that encodes the protein hemoglobin beta subunit that conferred a large amount of risk and high penetrance in Asian ancestry individuals, something that we would not have been able to find had we only looked at European ancestry individuals. So this really underscores the importance of using large amounts of data, specifically in diverse populations, to be able to assess the penetrance in different people. So what motivated you to do this research? This research project really came out of a brainstorming session between both Ian and I, where we wanted to see if there were better ways to classify disease risk of clinical variants. And then part of that really came for me from personal inspiration uh, from my time at the NIH. So before, prior to joining medical school, I completed a post back fellowship at the National Eye Institute at the NIH, where I worked with uh, an incredible physician scientist by the name of Dr. Brian Brooks. 
And with him, I was able to work with medical geneticists and as well as genetic counselors. And with them, I saw firsthand the impact of some of these important variants that they have on the health of patients with some rare eye diseases and be able to say, okay, if we can actually improve the information we give patients when they ask us, what's the risk of disease I have with my variants beyond just saying some risk, but we're not sure what to be able to say, oh, it's 10%, it's 50%, it's 70%. That for me shows the true impacts that this result and study can have. Why is this research important? So there's a couple of reasons of why the research that we did was quite important to the field of genetics and in the field of medicine. Uh, so first of all, it really allows us to have a more accurate, more precise estimate of risk that a patient might have based on the variants that they are carrying. So right now with the classifications of pathogenic or benign, these are very broad labels and they have a large degree of uncertainty for each one of them. So we can improve on that by offering a much more nuanced, uh, fine resolution estimate of penetrance, which gives a much more uh, numerical value of a probability for patients. So as Ian mentioned, penetrance provides a complementary system to classify disease risk of clinical variants in a quantitative fashion that complements the current categorical system of, of classifying disease risk, which is based on pathogenicity labels. What are the clinical implications of your paper? So that's a great question. And what we hope, uh, based on our study, is that we'll be able to improve genetic-based screening and genetic diagnoses of individuals. So what we mean by that is there's a large shift going on in medicine to be able to place genetic information for any individual at the forefront of their health care. Now, in order to do that, you have to have really accurate information about the particular type of genetic variants that a patient has in order to better inform their treatment and care. So we hope by offering penetrance as a way of more accurately gauging the risk of variance, this will be an important first step in order to further precision medicine and a genome first approach for medicine. So extending on that, we hope that one day our findings can help clinicians and patients who carry the variant allele to better understand their genetic risks to diseases and thereby inform treatment decisions. Awesome. So are there any limitations of the study you want to mention? One notable limitation I would like to mention is that our study used two biobanks. The first biobank is the Baomi Biobank, which is comprised of individuals from the Mount Sinai Health System. These individuals have a higher burden of disease, and this causes uh, higher levels of penetrance estimates. On the other hand, we also use the UK Biobank, which is comprised of healthy individuals, and this causes downward bias in penetrance estimates. And that's an important uh, area of research is looking at the impact of this genetic variation in different populations. If you're looking at a more hospital-based or biobank uh, healthy population, uh, there can be important differences there. Another limitation was that the way we determine phenotypes of patients, that is uh, their characteristics of disease or if they're healthy, was based on ICD-10 diagnosis codes. So these are derived from billing codes that physicians put inside the health records for patients. So this is an efficient method, but it's imperfect to be able to accurately say if this person has a disease or does not have disease. So future studies might want to be able to look at more refined diagnoses of patients to improve the accuracy of penetrance estimates. And another limitation, um, which we hope to improve on, is the sample size. So we looked at over 70,000 uh, participants, which sounds like a lot, but in future studies use even larger amounts of data you can actually look at more rare variants, even rarer than what we currently look at, and actually have more accurate penetrance estimates too. So with that future direction, uh, one of the th projects that we hope to 
uh, accomplish based on this study is if we can actually implement this information, this genetic information about penetrance to actually translate into the clinical space. So what we mean by that is if we can actually implement a genome first approach where we identify people with highly penetrant variants and see if they're actually underdiagnosed for diseases expected based on their DNA makeup. And that's a project that we are uh, eagerly uh, ongoing right now. So lastly, is there anyone you would like to acknowledge? This was really a, a team effort. And we, of course, would love to credit uh, all the participants in both biobanks at BioMe and UK Biobank uh, who devoted their time uh, and energy to help invest in this incredible data set that we were able to use. Also, all the people managing the biobanks uh, who were absolutely instrumental in setting up this type of data. And lastly, for me, as well as my thesis committee, who gave really critical feedback and advice to improve this project. Also, we would like to thank our Mount Sinai collaborators on the study, who provided great help in conducting this study, and also the faculty and staff at our institute, who operates and manages the Biome Biobank, which of course uh, our study was dependent on, and for which uh, our study wouldn't have been possible without.